Hello, today I want to finally make ethylene glycol dimetacrylate, which is a cross-linker for polymerization of methyl metacrylate or pretty much, I guess, any acrylate stuff. Anyway, in theory, this is very simple stuff. You need uh, ethylene glycol, which is antifreeze, and some metacrylic acid. Wait a second, why is this? Oh man. Alright, where was I? Um, so, yeah. Uh, Esterification. Simple stuff, right? But as I said, this is temperature sensitive stuff. Well, let's say that there is no simple way to remove water during the reaction. And because it is, it has to be performed at such low temperatures and... Um, well, that's one factor. Another factor is that uh, the ethylene glycol can form polymers of itself because it can form polyethylene glycol and it will likely will form polyethylene glycol. To what extent this reaction forms polyethylene glycol and to what it doesn't, it's unknown to me. And due to this, the, the stoichiometry is unknown. Because I already run this reaction, I have some knowledge, I'm fairly confident that polyethylene glycol was formed extensively. So, this leads me to believe that if I will mix these components of one to one or have even bigger excess of the ethylene glycol, I will be much more successful at completing the reaction and using all of the metacrylic acid because I can recover the metacrylic acid, but it's it's pain in the ass, and I mean it's kind of worth it, but yeah, I would rather not. So let's keep it at that. So having said that, this is I think about 50 mils, and I've got about this is about 100, and there is very little here. So I think I will use all of this material because I run this reaction at about at low concentration, but the yield was terrible. Anyway, let, let me do this and I will talk to you when the reaction is running. Well, well, well. Actually, I have added 155 grams because it's already full. Now I want to measure about 20 grams of sulfuric acid and I will add it slowly. You can see the bubbles. Okay, so this is ready to go and now I have to create a setup for vacuum distillation. Okay, so I've got good news and bad news. The bad news is that only stopper that I found is this one, which is storing my benzyl chloride for very very long time. And I want to use that because it smells. And good news is that I will use my thermometer anyway, since I have it, I can use it. And that said, uh, now I need to seal the system, and this will be a little bit controversial, perhaps, because I will use... I'm help you guys. I'm gonna melt you guys. This is not as uh, unexpected, probably, because it, one blob is here already, so... Anyway... Well, the thing is that I, I tried a few tricks, so... 
I used uh, concentrated sulfuric acid on the joints and stuff and nothing really worked. I don't, I don't have any vacuum grease, so let me stir this already. Ideally, I would like to measure the liquid temperature directly, but unfortunately I'm waiting, I'm waiting for some glass to come and so I can make more of this with various lengths. Because this is fine for distillation, you can uh, see the vapors, and also I don't have adapters, I, can, I have this Teflon tape blob here, which seals it quite well, but it's, uh, well, it is what it is. Yeah, this is about 23 degrees-ish. This is exactly the temperature that I want to have. Of course, battery is dead already. Anyway... Okay, so... Um, where was I? Yeah, I uh, need to seal this. This is very stupid, but and I really need to buy some vacuum grease because what the fuck even, right? But still, uh, you know what I would like more than vacuum grease? I would like a vacuum hose that is not stiff as well. You know what? So let me heat it up a little bit and then I will form it into the place. Okay, so hose is literally shaped into place now, and yeah, we can start pulling vacuum and we will see if anything comes over. Through some uh, assumptions and logic, I think what comes over is everything apart from propylene glycol, maybe even that comes over, but yeah, everything, but mainly what comes over is water, and so there was some metacrylic acid that came over, and I found out basically because it, well, metacrylic acid is not very soluble in water, but at small enough concentrations you will dissolve it in uh, water, so basically if you have one drop here, you can have just one milliliter of water and it will dissolve, because it's like what it's like one percent that that's one percent solution can be made even at room temperature and stuff but yeah so there was uh, metacrylic acid came over the ethylene glycol uh, metacrylate dimetacrylate came over definitely i think the the dimetacrylate has uh, lower vapor pressure or higher higher vapor pressure so I would I would imagine that it would come over and I could distill it even like uh, but nope uh, um, so it comes over I'm not sure at what concentrations probably not very great concentrations but in any case after the reaction is done and you collect enough water and nothing ever comes over like water you can combine everything once again together and do workup. So what you do basically is extract it with dichloromethane with a bunch of steps, but that we will come to in a few minutes, well actually in a few days probably, because we are running this at well 20 degrees, so yeah it's uh, not great. Okay, so after about well, I don't know, this is maybe even five hours later, but there is some water droplet on the thermometer. It's not really visible very well, but there is. Anyway, okay, let's open the vacuum port and 
Okay, so there's uh, nothing really that is coming over, even though temperature did rise up a little bit, but yeah, there is no sign of great things being ha happening apart from bubbles being formed there, which could be, I mean, what else could it be apart from water, really? But if it is, then it is condensing on the walls of this flask. And the pressure is now at... I had to heat this joint a little bit because it was leaking, so I did not like that at all. At all. So this is showing quite high temperature right now. But I have cranked up uh, heat just a little tiny bit so this is now at like maybe 35 degrees Celsius yeah I'm not sure if you can see this but there is cl clearly a water inside of this thing because it's like it's very milky it's not very consistent Okay, so now after a few minutes the bubbling is not as strong as it was and temperature is dropped yeah, not as much but still in the condenser I don't see like this cloudiness coming over very strongly and we have collected a bunch of liquid, not very much and there is not really any sign of two different fractions so I think I will shut down this distillation and we will return once again well actually we can calculate in theory how much water we should collect and assuming this is water because it's quite uh, possible that it is not I mean we can check but let's keep on going for now it may be also worth noting that as soon as I turned off the vacuum the temperature starts dropping so whatever temperature we got there previously I think it was about 20 degrees was likely correct okay so this is round number two I guess and you saw how this was bubbling last time, so I will apply vacuum again and see what happens. Okay, so I see quite a lot of bubbles already, and this is only at 200 millibar. Which is quite surprising. But let's see. I want to see also the temperature as we get uh, much... Uh, lower pressure okay so things are not very dramatic really I mean there are a fair bit of bubbles and we still have to go lower oh actually this is quite okay pressure 50 millibar so water should boil at about 26 ish degrees I will once again cr crank up heat a little bit just to sustain boiling point if any but temperature is just 16 degrees which is not that great and probably nothing is coming over still <coughs> it will likely take some time until the thing is heated up But yeah, temperature is rising, so that's good. Okay, so okay, so here's the thing: nothing is coming over, and um, I think that something should be because it's refluxing here. But it's uh, the rate is so fucking slow that it's uh, so. What I will do, I guess, is heat it up a little bit, and so things can condense. Yeah, but I don't think there is any water. Anyway, so I did a little fuck up 
that I turned off the heating completely so this was at well quite low temperature how low? probably 15 degrees maybe I don't think it was much colder so yeah you can see small droplets within stream of other liquid and these are immiscible obviously and I think this is uh, mainly metacrylic acid maybe with some ethylene glycol but there is definitely some ethylene glycol dimetacrylate and most importantly there will be water okay so temperature is pretty stable now but at least now I know that when I will distill this again I will preheat this uh, glass because why not basically right yeah it definitely seems that when I crank up heating it will produce more bubbles so question is huh that is a good question actually would it ever stop at such a heat because I cannot really keep it at much high heat but I must also distill water hmm okay okay so it wouldn't probably now it stopped so I can probably stop the distillation okay okay good to know okay so this is super weird somehow this whole thing kinda solidified what the fuck um well i am not pleased with this super super weird i mean this amount of liquid is not really enough to cause such an effect unless it polymerized which would be well not great Oops. well I I touched it the stir bar has moved and suddenly it well bumped but I mean if you could call this bumping uh, 43 degrees that's not very great is it Does not have 43 degrees unless nah I mean it could be that the reactivity to form ether bonds is uh, much higher than to form ester bonds and in such case we would like trap the metacrylic acid in this gel well but really I'm not sure not sure what to think about this okay so I had to break neck of this flask and also there is nothing that dissolves it and it is really 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 stiff and sticky stuff so I will have great trouble getting getting it out okay so let me show you what happens in water this is uh, warm water and you can see that it changed color to white-ish and it not really doing anything but I think it's changing volume I think there is something that is going into water and this gel is left behind which would tell me only thing that was soluble in water was ethylene glycol so I think that ethylene glycol is going into water and 
this thing must be the metacrylic acid that has polymerized, which is fucking weird, but okay, let's continue and we will try something maybe to identify this. Okay, so I've done some research and I'm pretty confident that this is polyethylene glycol, very high molecular weight one, as you can see. This is not great, but that said, I know what to do to prevent this happening. So, okay, hear me out. So, one solvent that we can use is actually metacrylic acid, so we can uh, use huge excess of metacrylic acid and then add ethylene glycol dropwise and then distill water very often and very regularly and with that we can form quite nice uh, ethylene glycol dimetacrylate molecules like with a minimum amount of polymerization as I said some polymerization is acceptable to me yeah, so that's what I will do next, probably, but I'm out of um, metal metacrylate now, so this will have to wait a little bit. Okay, so I think I have extracted everything that I could from the gel. It was a very painful process, it took me a few hours, like maybe even five hours, so I did not record it. I extracted it first with water and then with DCM, which is here. Then I washed the DCM with uh, sodium hydroxide to get rid of any unreacted uh, metacrylic acid. So I obviously I dried it, uh, so now I am left with this. So I will distill it to quite a low amount, then I will dry it on or I will evaporate rest and we may look at what we've got. Okay, for whatever reason I've got a lot of water on my lens. Seriously, I don't understand. But anyway, I've got 10 grams of uh, I got 10 grams of the stuff so this is very good and this is actually so good that I can do some fun stuff with it so first of all I guess uh, let's uh, test if this is working as it is supposed to work so here is the protocol and Basically, what it says is that I need what uh, two percent solution of methyl metacrylate and uh, TPO. Well, I'm not saying this molecule because I you don't even remember its name, and it's uh, anyway. So I've got eight percent solution, and I need about half gram of it. Then you need one and a half grams of methyl metacrylate pure. That should add up to about two grams. And finally, I will use half gram of this ethylene glycol dimetacrylate. Okay, so now our solution is ready. I will dump it into this tube. Okay, so let's start a party. They have all 
already removed some background so you can see how this liquid looks. Okay, that's quite interesting. Even uh, after three and a half minutes, this thing still did well. It's not polymerized enough, but since this is not working as expected, I did some investigation and I I fit, I mixed the ethylene glycol uh, dimethacrylate with water, and as you can see, it seems to be very impure because water is not clear but there are some droplets maybe maybe I will be able to clean it up and reuse it oh man okay updated yield near zero uh, this will probably be about one or maybe two grams so yeah not sure about this man the color is completely off but hey let's see maybe maybe We are running for 4 minutes and this is theory still quite liquidy so in conclusion well yeah it's still quite liquidy our reaction is shit and our product is shit as well yeah so there's some polymer but I mean this is bad this is bad. Okay, so to conclude this, um, I will have to repeat this uh, reaction again. Now, I was out of metacrylate, but I am not anymore. Fuck. So... Yeah, we'll... Uh, make another video with a little bit uh, improved uh, procedure and hopefully this will be successful. So with that uh, wish me luck and I will see you next time.